Welcome, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started with head coach Jay Johnson. If you have a question, please raise your hand. First question, Michael Lev. Jay, on the heels of you know, clinching the Pac-12 co-championship, uh, clinching the automatic berth, how do you ensure that your guys remain locked in for this weekend? Reinforce what's made us successful. And I think uh, these players take pride in uh, playing well and, and pride in the maturity of, of focusing one game, one pitch at a time. So we had a brief conversation about that last night. Then we went back to, to practice and getting ready to go. I actually have zero concerns of that. Sure. Given that you are in the tournament, um, you're going to be hosting. Don't know what the seed's going to be, but do you approach this weekend any differently in terms of how you utilize personnel, uh, pitch counts, maybe you know, erring on the side of caution if someone's got a little bit of an injury or something of that nature? Good question. Um, you know, I think we we want to play uh, both rounds of the postseason at High Corbett Field, and so to give ourselves the best chance to do that is to win as many games as, as you can. I think that uh, when you look at how the committee usually looks at it, I think they take value in every game. And so these three games are on the schedule. And so we want to play well in them. Uh, you know, I think really the only thing that we're going to do differently is uh, Chase is going to remain pitching on Friday. Garrett is going to remain pitching on Saturday. Uh, we do not have not decided who we're going to start tomorrow. And I think uh, that's in the best interest of those two because they've emptied the tank. Uh, most of the other stuff will, will likely remain the same, you know, in that um, what we're doing and uh, what we want to put ourselves in position for. Next question, Brian Peterson. So you only have two seniors on the roster. Are, uh, are, are Preston and Vince the only ones that you're going to be doing like a, uh, a ceremony for, or are there draft eligible guys that you know are, are going to be gone that you may be doing something for this weekend? Yeah, I can't confirm that because there's like department policies and place and those types of things. My idea is to recognize all the players that have graduated. Um, now, the senior day actual ceremony will be Preston and Vince because it's for those that have exhausted their eligibility. But we will acknowledge all the guys that graduated um, and we'll acknowledge Dixie State seniors and then we'll have a senior day ceremony for Preston and Vince. And that's 10 players that graduated? I believe that's correct. It's 10 or 11. Okay, thank you. Next question back to Michael. So. Uh, you didn't use Preston this past weekend. You said he was getting close. Do you, do you think we're going to see him out there this weekend? The plan is to pitch him this weekend. So would you say he's 100%? Or? I haven't seen him in a game yet, but the plan is to pitch him this weekend. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, earlier uh, this week, you know, you were mentioning Tyler Casagrande's um, contributions, his, his journey. Um, he started the season in the lineup and then became a reserve. Um, what do you like about the way that he handled that whole situation and kept himself ready? I think that all the players know that we have good, good players on our team. And they all know that my motivation, the coaching staff's motivation is to win and put our team in position to be successful. They're all competitive. They all want to be a significant part of that. And, you know, in Tyler's case, you know, he earned some opportunities early on by how he played, you know, last summer in the fall leading up to the season. And that's because he is a very good player. And I don't know if this is specific to Tyler. We just have a lot of really good players. I think uh, I have never thought about who's available, who's not available. It, it's kind of that, you know, for lack of a better term, next man up mentality, because I have confidence in all of those guys, especially in the outfield. I think we have probably the deepest outfield unit of anybody in college baseball. And, you know, you look at, at Dante, I mentioned, I mean, last Sunday, he was the best player in, in college baseball. Um, you know, Ryan has had a terrific year. Uh, Mac has really contributed to winning. But then right behind them, you look at Tyler, um, you look at Tanner Otremba, 
Uh, both of those guys have contributed. They both contributed significantly to the Pac-12 championship. Chase Davis um, had some key at-bats up at Washington State, had a huge at-bat at Oregon State. Uh, Blake Paw, you know, I mentioned was our best player uh, over a, a two-week stretch, you know, before he had that, that injury. So that's seven guys that I have tremendous confidence in. And, and Tyler is certainly one of those. You know, I think he has a uh, terrific skill. He's a plus plus runner. Um, he has really good bat speed when his approach is, is in line as it has been, you know, the, the last, let's just call it three weeks or so. Um, he can be as effective as anybody on our team. And he certainly was a huge part of the Washington comeback and was huge in the the comeback against Oregon State, and I have a, I have a ton of confidence in him. And long-winded answer is, is he's approached everything exactly the way a mature player does, that, that is confident and believes in themselves and, and has been ready for his opportunities and, and has really contributed to our success. Do, do you need to have those conversations with those guys over the course of the season, the guys who aren't playing, to sort of re-instill that idea that there's – still part of the team they're going to contribute at some point or is it just sort of like at the beginning of the year the expectations are set and everyone kind of knows that yeah I, I think it's important as a as a coach to player communication trust is really important um, I think uh, the trust is built among two things like you know we say what we do we do what we say it was very little gray area you know in in, in between those things I think something I take pride in, and, and I would hope the players would say this, is whether you're a starter or not, um, I think they know that we are invested in their development. You know, I don't think player A gets treated different than player B when it comes to helping them be the type of player we think they can be and allow them to be a positive contributor to what we're doing. And I would hope that's what they would say. And, um, you know, in you never know how this thing's going to go. You know, I mean, I pulled Tyler, Chase, Blake, and Tanner aside before the game on uh, Sunday and basically said, hey, all of you are going to contribute to this, okay? Tyler is going to start. He got two hits off Jacob Finnings, the starter, in 2019. He put together a great at-bat on Friday night. He put together a couple great at-bats last week, you know, one against New Mexico State, one against Washington. So Tyler is going to start. Okay. Then they're going to go to probably Chase Watkins, who they ended up going to at that point in time. And then Tanner, you or Blake need to be ready to hit at that point in time. Okay. Then if it circles back around, they're going to go to Joey Munt. Okay. Chase, that is going to be your at bat. Okay. At that point in time. And then so that would leave Blake or Tanner. You're going to be the defensive replacement uh, in the ninth inning after we've kind of worked through all of that. Now, it didn't happen exactly. I decided to move Chase up to pinch hit for Tony. Then Kyson had to come in the game right there. But Watkins was in the game, and we used Tanner uh, to pinch hit at that point in time. And then Blake was there. So all four of those guys did a good job when you think about Tyler taking three or four quality at bats. Chase starting that rally. Tanner moved the ball with two strikes to move Kyson up. And then Blake was in the game in the ninth inning for defense, which made us better. So um, that's just kind of an example of, of that. Sure. Vince's um, overall numbers are good this year. Um, he was obviously like great against uh, Oregon State the other day. He's been a little bit inconsistent over the course of the season. What's been the difference in the outings when he's really on? Like, what do you see? Um, in those particular times that maybe um, you haven't seen all the time. And, and if he does that, you know, he can be really effective. Yeah, I think uh, the first thing I would say is what's good for Vince is he has really good awareness and, you know, can really pick up on, hey, when I'm pitching well, this is what I need to do. Okay, if I'm off, I need to get myself back here. Uh, we had a brief conversation last week. I believe it was like Wednesday before we traveled up to Oregon State about what some of those things look like. And, uh, you know, Sunday's outing against Oregon State, going back, he was excellent against Utah. He was ex excellent against USC. Uh, we just kind of itemized some of those things. I think he has good awareness of them. 
and he really put those into play on on Sunday, which was was great to see. Um, you know, we asked a lot out of him. You know what I mean? Like early on in the season, like he was pitching twice a week in those four game weeks, and um, you know it's a long year, and so you know I think he might have hit a little bit of a a tired phase. He would never admit that to you because of the type of competitor he is, but. I put a lot on his plate. He responded. We won most of those games. And, you know, the thing I'm impressed about him is to be a good reliever. You almost kind of have to have like this amnesia approach, bad outing that's gone. And then you're on to the next. And that's what I think he's done a really good job of. So um, Dave Hickey announced last week that uh, you could have 100 percent capacity for baseball games, starting with Dixie State and moving forward. What would it mean? Uh, for the team and the program to you know go out there a week from Friday in an NCAA regional and have you know eight thousand nine thousand fans at High Corbett. Oh, I think it'd be awesome. I want more as many people to come out this weekend as possible to to kind of simulate that. And I don't know if it was just hardly having anybody at the beginning of the season, but there's been a couple home games where I've just kind of turned my head for a second and then like wow, it feels like there's a lot of people there. So. Uh, that's awesome. I'm very appreciative to everybody that's come out so far and uh, definitely want to get as many people out there as possible. This has been a great home field advantage. The fans are a big part of that and, and we want as many as possible. Next question, Ari Coslow. Obviously, you guys have your own season to focus on, but I was just wondering if as a team, you guys were uh, watching the softball team this past weekend and what, how you guys have been handling that as a team or is it all you know, focusing on your season? Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a great department and we all support each other. And, uh, you know, I was so, we, I would think were so immersed in what was going on Sunday and, and won, and then, you know, Stanford won. So we clinched the championship and I think it was probably back. We were on the bus heading back to Portland to stay the night before we traveled home. Somebody was saying like they were down six or seven or eight or something and came back and won. And, very happy for Coach Candrea, uh, very happy for their team. You know, I think they were probably, like us, felt like you were a, a contender, real contender last year for a national championship, and that got torpedoed by COVID. And then sounds like a lot of those girls came back, and, you know, they came back for, for this time. And so to see them capitalize on that and, and win a regional is cool. And, uh, you know, we'll be pulling for them in, at Arkansas this weekend, that's for sure. Next question, Matt Moreno. Uh, how beneficial is it to have this final uh, series of the regular season at home to maybe get you guys uh, going in, get into some kind of a routine before you head into the postseason? Yeah, we have a good routine at home. Uh, it's very structured, very deliberate uh, that we'll stay in as best that we can. Um, you know, and it's a good point, Matt. I, I think we we don't or we put a high value on preparation and uh, and routine is a big part of preparation. So the fact that we could be in our own dugout the fact that we can, you know, utilize our cages, the fact that, you know, these guys can sleep in their own beds. Um, we can kind of stay on a schedule. Uh, I do like that. And I like it with this team because I don't think they take any of those things for granted, which shows maturity, which leads to consistency, which leads to elite performance. And so I think we can really use that to our advantage. And, and I'm glad that we have this weekend here to, to help us continue to do that. Do we have any more questions for coach? All right. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Next up, we have Vince Finelli. Questions for Vince, please raise your hand. First question, Michael Lev. Hey there, Vince. Uh, you said on Twitter that that was the best win uh, that you've ever been a part of. I assume you meant as, as an athlete in your, in your entire athletic career, what was it like to, to close that game out? I mean, it was super special. I mean, I would not have been in that situation without my teammates. I mean, those are quality at bats that happened in the seventh and eighth and ninth inning were like nothing short of just amazing to watch. Like it was one of those things where you just had to like take a step back and just really appreciate the moment that you're in. And uh, one of the things that, in the eighth inning, when I when I got done with the eighth, and I was about to go out for the ninth, when uh, we put up that one run to take us in the lead, uh, Yeski pulled me aside and said, "You just got to enjoy this right now. I mean, pressure is an opportunity, and you just have to enjoy everything that you're going through right now." And 
to me that kind of put my head in the right spot to go back in the ninth and finish it. Sure. It would be really easy for you guys to maybe lose focus this weekend because you just clinched, you know, the Pac-12. You've got the NCAA tournament coming up. Jay did not seem concerned about that at all. Um, how do you guys stay locked in this weekend when the stakes aren't quite as high as they were and as they will be? I mean, it's just a not, no, it's just a really another opportunity to play and uh, just compete out there because every single time we get we get between the lines, we want to compete. I mean, I know that there's, I mean, Dante, Boss, Holgate, all of those guys, they're not going to go through the motions out here. I mean, there's, it's just not that they're not those kind of people. Next question, Ari Coslow. What was the feeling like just between the team as a whole on the trip back to Tucson after, you know, the big series went over Oregon State? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, um, I mean, it was kind of it was kind of cool to see the coaches and like all of the staff members kind of like super excited and happy about it because the amount of work that has been put into it. I mean, if you think about it, it's been a two year like journey and it was just an all out grind for two years because COVID last year, we didn't really get to finish this thing. And for it to end like this way at the end of this year, like the regular season, uh, I mean, it's pretty special because. I mean, coming back, I mean, I know Preston and I have uh, really been cherishing these moments because uh, we really, we like last year, like I said, we really didn't think we were going to be able to come back and do it again. But I mean, this is kind of one of the most special times that I've ever been a part of. Uh, Coach Johnson announced that he expects Preston Price to return to the mound this weekend. Uh, what is it going to be like having him back, you know, heading into the tournament time uh, in the back of the bullpen? Oh, I mean, it's huge. I mean, anytime you can get Preston Price going, uh, it's always an advantage for us. So, I mean, I'm excited to watch him throw, and I'm excited to watch him compete this weekend. Next question, Brian Peterson. Uh, Vince, when did you decide, how quickly after it was announced that you could have an extra year, when, how quickly did you decide you were going to come back for this year? Um, I mean, I was mostly talking with Yeski a lot, and because, I mean, he's the kind of, person I'm gonna shoot you straight and I mean if he would have told me like hey I think it would have been in your best interest to play professionally then I would have listened but he said I think it's in your best interest to come back to school and right 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 away my dad said I agree with him and I and I just listened to like like all those power figures I have in my life my role models I kind of just listened to them and I kind of just taken fact like they have the, their best interest in mind with me and I, all I really wanted to do is come back and win and just keep winning. That's all I want to do. Was that around the draft time? Yeah, just shortly after. So uh, hypothetically, if this had been a regular draft and you had and you had been selected in whatever round it would have been, it would have been a, a much different decision to have to make? Yeah, but I, I 100% made the right decision to come back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question, back to Michael. Your numbers are pretty good um, over the course of the entire season. Um, I'm sure you would acknowledge there's been some degree of inconsistency. How would you assess um, how you've performed personally so far this year? Um, to be honest with you, I mean, I've been a little disappointed in myself with some of the outings that have happened. I mean, uh, take away a couple, like two, three of those outings that did, where things weren't going so hot. Uh, I feel like I would have been a lot more you know, happy with myself. And, but at the end of the day, uh, we're Pac-12 champions and I don't really care about my personal like stats or anything like that, because I mean, if we're winning, we're winning. Like, I don't care if, I mean, obviously I want to pitch well, but at the same time we're winning games and I don't like the team is way more important than my individual stats. Jay said that you guys had a little chat, I think last week, um, and you were maybe uh, reviewing some of your really good outings and maybe like focusing on like those things. What, what were some of the things that you guys maybe came up with that helped you to perform so well uh, this past Sunday? Uh, one of the biggest things was like just the mental side as far as like staying aggressive. I mean, he said that like he thought that some of the times and I think it was Washington, it, it kind of felt like I was just waiting to like for something to happen rather than just attacking. And I mean, I completely understood what he was getting at because uh, he's always shot me straight and I've always listened to Coach Johnson. 
And no matter what, I'm going to do anything I can to help the team. So speaking of the mental side, you had told us a couple of weeks ago that you sometimes will talk to the mental coach Mm -hmm. that Jay has made available to you guys. When did you first start doing that? And what do you kind of get out of it? Um, I think it was, okay, it was my junior year here. So like three years ago, uh, we were, I remember it was right after the Oregon State series when uh, I got put in, I think it was like the seventh inning, it was tied. And I threw like three curveballs and I threw it like 10 feet because like the fans were going crazy. And like mentally, I just like shut down. And I was like, I've never experienced that in my life. So I talked to Carlene and ever since then, it's been going pretty well as far as like my mental side and how to like stay attacking and just kind of focusing on like the certain moment. And like, she really teaches me about staying focused on like the present and kind of just staying in that attack phase in your, in your mind. Is it one of those things that I know Jay talks about that all the time too? Is it one of those things where it's sort of easier said than done? Like you can, you can say it, but to actually go out and do it is, is a lot harder. Yeah, 100%. I mean, if you're not like fully invested in like the mental training and mental aspects, then you're kind of just wasting your time. Like it takes all of your energy to fully, like to fully understand what uh, Miss Carlene's been talking about. Do we have any more questions for Vince? All right, thank you, Vince. Okay, we'll finish up with Tyler Casagrande. Questions for Tyler, please raise your hand. First question, Michael Lev. Hey there, Tyler. How's it going? It's going fine, thank you. Um, so you began the season in the starting lineup and then it wasn't too long after that that you your role changed uh, and you were coming off the bench. How did you handle that whole situation? It was easy. Look, I mean, to win a national championship, you got to have 13, 14 guys that can contribute to a team. It's not just nine good players. Um, you got to have depth. So I was completely open to whatever my role was throughout the season, as long as we were winning. And, uh, you know, I took advantage of my opportunities when they came. And, you know, just going back to what I said first, you know, just with injuries and stuff like that, you got to have a lot of guys ready to come off the bench. Uh, so just being ready when my name's called to, to help my team any way I can. But uh, no, to answer your question, it wasn't hard. Uh, you know, I, these guys are awesome. It's been a fun season regardless of my role. So it's, uh, it, it was easy. Sure. You never know when that moment will come, though. How do you stay ready every single day when you might not play or you might come up and it's the most important at bat of the game? For me, I think just from a mental standpoint, just staying engaged in the game uh, throughout its whole just watching every pitch so that when my name is called, I'm ready to go in. Uh, you know, I think it can be easy to lose focus on, you know, the chance that you are going to go in. Uh, but for me, I mean, I've been here for three years now. I know, uh, you know, what works best for me to get prepared to go in. Uh, so just like I said, whenever my name's called, just be ready for that opportunity. Getting that big hit against Washington, which really kind of uh, ignited the the rally that you guys had. What did that do for your confidence? I mean, it's funny just because, you know, what you said, you got to be ready whenever. Uh, that wasn't planned because I went in and for Holgate in right field the inning prior, and then they tied the game, and I ended up coming up. But, you know, like I said, you just got to be – you got to be ready for, for whatever. Uh, from a confidence standpoint, I mean, I know what I'm capable of. Uh, you know, I don't really – think it didn't anything for me personally rather for the team you know just trying to have a good at bat to you know pass the baton uh you know obviously I had two sack behind me so do whatever I can to get that guy up uh so that's that's more what it was about not any personal confidence or anything like that I think from a team standpoint though it was it was a it was a big team win and that you know kind of propelled us into the weekend and then into Oregon State next question Ari Costlow Following the big comeback win in the series finale and the series clinching, you know, win of Oregon State, what was the trip back to Tucson like among the whole team? It was awesome. I mean, our flight, we woke up at like 4.30 a.m., but I think that's the happiest we've all been waking up that early. Um, you know, obviously, it's a lot of hard work went into it. So we were just we were just pumped up that we could, you know, come back to Tucson knowing that we at least clinched a share. Uh, you know, we don't really have to you know, hope for another team to do anything, you know, it was in our hands and we took advantage of it. <clears throat> we have any more questions for Tyler? 
Yes, Michael, go ahead. Um, how, how does a kid from Virginia end up at Arizona? The weather. <laughs> um, I came out here for a, for a tournament when I was a freshman in high school, uh, and one of the coaches on the staff happened to see me play. It was a, it was a weird connection. One of my high school travel coaches played with uh, one of our old coaches here. So that was sort of the connection. And then I came out to do a camp my sophomore year of high school. Um, and then, you know, you just see the campus, the, the weather, being able to play all year round is a huge advantage coming from Virginia because there's, you know, months that we can't get outside and play. So I just thought it was in my best interest to come out here. I thought it would make me a lot better just being able to play all year round. And then obviously, you know, the best coaching staff in the country, um, the facilities and then just the tradition of Arizona and the opportunity to compete to go to Omaha every year. So easy decision. Sure. I, both your parents went to James Madison. Is that right? Correct. Do they have a baseball program? Yeah, my dad actually played there. So. I did. Okay. Yeah. So was that tempting for you at all to follow in their footsteps? I just, I wanted to do something different. You know, everyone from Virginia, you know, either goes to Virginia, Virginia Tech, James Madison. Um, you know, I actually, my dad took me to Omaha every year when I was growing up. The first year he took me was 2012 when Arizona won the national championship. Mm -hmm. So from that moment on, it was like my dream school. So it was, it was kind of cool to get to come out here. Um, you know, like I said, I wanted to do something different, go play on the West Coast. I've always liked the West Coast. And I thought that, uh, you know, it kind of fit my style of play better. Sure. So going to the College World Series, Omaha, is it, he just decided we're going to do this for fun so you can have that experience or, or why did you do that I was there for a tournament when I was okay in 2012 uh and you know it was like the, the way the tournament was set up is like they gave tickets to each of the travel teams to go watch the games and like I said Arizona won that year I think they beat South Carolina if I'm correct um and I just I was like I want to play at, at Arizona so it was kind of the first first taste of college baseball for me as a kid so okay can you tell us what your dad does for a living I heard they were talking about it during the game uh, from a couple people. He's a he's an orthodontist, and then he actually got the opportunity ten years ago. We're huge DC sports fans, uh, but he's the orthodontist for the the Capitals and the Redskins, or the football team, and uh, the other professional teams in, in DC. But yeah, he's an orthodontist. Right. So okay. So and that's a big job, especially with a hockey team, right? Um, <laughs> fixing people's teeth. And you yourself played hockey. Um, in high school, do you still skate? Do you still do you still do that? No, I don't. We want to we want to, uh, you know, stay healthy. So we don't we don't do that. But, uh, it, you know, I loved hockey. It was awesome. I think it, you know, it, it helps uh, hand to eye. Uh, I think I got faster, stronger just from being on the ice all the time. But, yeah, I, I played hockey up until my junior year of high school when I committed here. So no, so no hockey then for no. now while you play baseball. Um, the one other thing I want to ask you about is um, uh, guys give you credit for having the best shoe game um, on the team. Like, do you come up with your own designs? Like, what is the, how does that all kind of come together? I do, I do like shoes. Me and Daniel Susak, we had uh, this like cleat company. They, they design shoes and they do a lot of professional guys. I think they wanted to branch out and get some college guys um, just so they can, you know, advertise their brand. But Daniel was customizing a pair of Jordan cleats so I was like I guess I will too and I've always had the the high C like the the actual high C uh fruit punch logo in mind I thought that would be pretty cool to put on a cleat yeah I, I saw that one um that one had a message on it too uh, do you remember what the message was that was written on there yeah it says uh everyone gets 24 hours a day seven days a week it's what you make of it uh just kind of like you know everyone's given the same opportunity uh, my dad said that to me growing up so I put it on the bottom there and is, is that message something that's kind of in your mind when, when you're placed in these situations that you've been placed into lately? I think just from a, from a team standpoint, uh, you know, we all work really, really hard um, you know, to take advantage of, of our opportunities. Um, and I think, I think as a team, we work harder than anyone in the country. We put in a lot of work, so. Thank you. Are there any more questions for Tyler? All right, thank you everybody. That's all we have for today.